All right, let's go ahead and get into it here. So I have the fabulous MGB OSD kit here. Um, Retro Game Repair Shop had sent this my way. This is a kit designed by the uh, One Chip Company. Um, and for those that are unaware, the One Chip Company, I refer to them as such because they have no official branding, but they make kits with this big One Chip on it. Uh, and that seems to be the, the one thing that they have in common with all their kits there. So this looks like a funny playing ribbon in every single way, except that instead of having those five discrete chips, it has this one big chip and hence the name. Uh, but anyway, here's what you get with your kit. You get a wonderful sticker here, a card. Thank you for being a customer. Thank you for shopping with us. Customer satisfaction is our top priority. So on and so forth. Um, coupon code on the back if you're a first time shopper. Uh, I, I genuinely like this shop, and I'm not just saying that because they keep sending me uh, kits and other cool stuff to check out, but anyway. Uh, also included, you have a little adhesive gasket for the screen. Not one, but two insulators for the um, PCB to make sure nothing shorts on anything else. A screen lens. The LCD itself, which, let me go ahead and disconnect that. LCD itself. The PCB adapter here. <clears throat> Little ribbon cable. And then some wires. And so the uh, cool thing about this kit in particular is, yes, it does use the exact same LCD as the Funny Playing kit, which actually is really nice because this is a fantastic LCD and uh, uh, you know we're, it 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 works really nicely in this one thing that's not included that I really hope they start including with these uh, with future versions of this kit are um, some brackets for positioning this thing I did go ahead and make my own bracket um, and that's I just pop that out here that's what this is uh, it says untested because when I ordered these, they were at the time untested, but this particular bracket is tested and is working, at least for the funny playing kits. Um, but I will have to file off some of these nubbins here before I can use it. But anyway, let's go, let's go ahead and get this, let's, let's get this install started. Let's go, uh, let's get it. All right, so tonight's donor, that is a bad spot for that, but I'm just gonna leave it there. Tonight's donor is this Game Boy Pocket that says no power, but then I crossed that out and said no sound, and well, it seems that both are working. So I don't really know what the hell was going on when I tested this, but it seems to be working fine now, so this is what we're going to use. I am going to be reshelling this because, you know what, I have no problem with the pink. I do genuinely like it, but without a matching battery cover, it kind of root it just it's not doing it for me. But also, I do have a new shell that I want to check out. So you know, two birds, one stone, that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and get this turn down here, like usual. Just six tri-ring screws in the periphery. And excuse me. But at some point, I might have to take a break because if this video goes over 35 minutes and 32 seconds, I do not have enough storage on my phone to actually save it. So, if we get that far, I will be pausing momentarily. And hopefully there's not a surprise in here waiting for me. It does seem to work, so hopefully I don't need to do anything. And... That is actually quite a bit cleaner than I expected. Oops, bent the shit out of that. Just getting all the loose dust and particulate out of here. Everywhere. 
release the bale there, it just slides up towards the top. There's two tabs on the side that you can jab your fingernails into. And then three more JIS screws, not Phillips. This is a J1 bit, not a Phillips bit. Pop that out of there. Um, eh, yeah, I'll release it. Just give the shell a little bit of a twist and that'll pop out the original screen there. Now, since I'm reshelling it, I don't need to do this, but since I'm also testing the kit and getting some, uh, like, getting a baseline as far as the power, I do need to actually hook this screen back in. Alright, alright. Power in here, that is not what I need, that is what I need. Let's switch that on. Clamp those on there. I believe I usually test these systems with Pokemon Yellow. So let me pop that in there. And it should be on. What am I missing? There it goes. It should have sound. Too. Oh, it's not up. I will admit, it is a little on the quiet side, but that is obviously nothing to do with the backlight kit since I haven't even installed it yet. Alright, so on the overworld in Pokemon Yellow, a Game Boy Pocket at 2.4 volts pulls anywhere from 130, um, 113, 93, 91, 86, Jesus. 84 to 138 milliamps. Um, you can see this uh, squiggly line on my power supply here. This is representing the power that this thing is actually drawing, and you can see how, how much that oscillates up and down. It's kind of hard to tell with the sample rate. Ironically, the sample rate on my uh, old power supply was lower, so it was easier to get a good number. Uh, but on this one, it's much higher, and it's just hard to tell because the number bounces around a little bit. I'm sorry, the camera is shaking. Um, so, yeah, 100, anywhere from, what I say, 86? Yeah. Oh, no, I just saw it go down to 84. So anywhere from 100, or 84 to 138 is where I've seen it go. So, let's try out the new kit. I'm just going to turn that off there. And I don't normally say this. I do end up doing this anyway, but I don't normally say that I'm doing this. You should always, 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 whenever you get a kit like this, plug it in and test it before doing the full install. Because, unfortunately, sometimes there are defects. And once you get it installed, you know, if you discover that you have a defect, you're kind of up shit creek. All right. So I like the ribbon cable adapter for these things. I like that there's no components on it. It's much, that should be much more durable. That is 100% backwards. I was wondering why that looked so funny. Okay. It's on there. Fold that forward. Jam that in there. It is on. And Game Boy's on. But the screen is not. I can hear that it booted. So what did I do wrong? It's not one of these sensors. Oh, 
Oh, I know what I did wrong. Hang on, hang on. There's a, um... Helps if you follow the instructions. Um... There is a solder pad that we need to do first. So there is these four pads up here, excuse me. Um, I was looking at these. It is not these, it is not these, but it is these right here that are labeled. There's the ground, we can ignore that safely. Select, that is for the button control. A, that is for button control. B, that is for button control and bat. That one we need to actually attach to something so that we can test this. Without that, this doesn't work. So unfortunately, you do have to partially install it before you can test. But as long as you don't make a total mess of this part, it should be fine. And I absolutely should reiterate that you should not solder while this is attached to the screen. I am a professional, or at least I play one on TV. And just while testing, I'm going to use a longer wire to make my life easier. And this gets soldered up to the common pin. of the power switch. And I clearly need to bump up the heat. There we go. Or not use that tip, but it's all done. Okay, that goes there. That goes there. Make sure those aren't touching because I accidentally bent both of them. And let's try it out one more time. Hey, now it comes on. So in the overworld, in the exact same place, we are pulling, interestingly, the power ripple, it's much less, uh, much more stable. And it's not going up and down as much. I don't know how well you can see that. I'm trying to move this over. So it looks like just peaked at 263 or something like that. And I've seen it go as low as 207. That's the pallet sensor. All right, we'll just leave that there. Brightness. So that peak at 299, 309. 265 to 309. Oop, that wasn't the highest. That was. It goes as low as 195 to 245. It's, yeah, it's, it's rough with the ripple, man. It's hard to get a good estimate. But it's pulling anywhere from two to two and a half times as much power. Alright. Alright. Let's go ahead and get this let's get this install underway here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There are eleven brightness levels apparently. That's interesting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It goes to eleven. 
just so we get a max brightness value that is 267 to 320. Two sixty-seven to three twenty-two. I'll average that on my spreadsheet. But there you go. It does work. So let's go ahead and get this. Let's let's get this install underway here. Lights back on so I can see. Ugh, okay. And at some point while I was filming, the timer went from 35 whatever I said it was to 42.17 so that's nice I guess I don't know variable frame rates all right let's pull that out I'm gonna set this aside for now because we have to trim the shell so this is tonight's Game Boy donor let's let's go ahead and meet tonight's shell donor it is a beautiful new shell from our favorite least favorite retailer here retro 6 and opinions aside this is not one of retro 6's molds this is just a retro 6 exclusive color of a generic mold but this is that uh, clear black that didn't do what I wanted making a mess here holy crap okay but yeah clear black which I've always liked but yeah this is not a retro 6 mold this is a generic shell that retro 6 had commissioned in this color which I actually really like so since this isn't a retro 6 mold it is not advertised as perfect and thus I can hold it to a much more appropriate standard but um, unfortunately, these are not IPS compatible. There is some trimming that I need to do. And also, unfortunately, unlike the last kit I did this one, which I still haven't even peeled the plastic off of, there is quite a bit of trimming that we need to do. Um, the trim itself is going to be extremely similar to Funny Playing's trims. Um, bear with me, I was just pulling up my cheat sheet here. I'm also going to turn off my soldering iron because I'm not going to need it for a while. And let's get started. We need to remove this whole thing. And of course I'm using flush cutters but if you have a uh, rotary tool on a rigid tool stand commonly referred to as a drill press stand and uh, some flat end mills that is definitely a good alternative that's what I have and what I normally would use for something like this but for my videos I default to a method that most people can follow along with without having to buy something if you don't have flush cutters, get some flush cutters. Do yourself a favor. They are extraordinarily handy tools. Oof, that hit me in the face. Also worth having eye protection. I need to cut off some of this as well. This is actually going extraordinarily smooth. This shell cuts really nice. How far do we need to go? Okay. Oh, you know what? I think I actually have a bracket for this. I know I do, actually. I mean, aside from the fact that it's... 
already installed in the Game Boy. Did I remove it? It is not installed in the Game Boy. I removed it. Ooh, I'm gonna have to pause in just a moment and go find that. I mean, I know I have the one that I made, but if there's a nicer one, I'll use that. So normally at this point I would go pause and clean this up on my uh, Dremel, but this is this is coming out real nice. I don't think I need to. All right. Let me uh, oh let me pause and clean this up though. Uh, so what I'm doing to clean this up is I'm just gonna take my file and run it along any of these nubs that are protruding until I get them nice and flat but I'm gonna pause while I do that so that this video is not that much longer than it needs to be right that cleaned up real nicely so the side that says this side down goes towards the front here that just slips in here and then I'm going to disconnect this for now. That goes in like that almost. Smile for the camera. We need to do just, just the hair more trimming to get that seated in there. So this is designed for a funny playing kit, which you cannot adjust once it's installed. This thing, however, this is the on-screen display or um, OSD kit, which one of the cool features that they added was a um, an on-screen display. Uh, but one of the features of said on-screen display is that you can adjust the position of the window of the image. It really is that much material that we need to remove. the close like it'll fit if I jam it in there but I don't necessarily want to just jam it in you know you know if, if it's not gonna fit you gotta you gotta warm up you know you gotta get it eased in there can't just jam things in and hope for the best that rarely works So there are instructions on the listing if you get this from Retro Game Repair Shop. There are there are probably also instructions on any other listing that sells these kits. Because why would they sell it without instruction? That just seems like a good way to open up support requests otherwise or open yourself up to support requests. Ooh. 
hit him in the face. So did that. Okay. We're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there. There we go. It's nice. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So, I'm a little bit nervous about this, but I think I'm just going to full send the... Excuse me. I am... Fairly certain this comes out. There we go. Oh, no, almost. It's a bit of a tight fit. There we go. And where did the adhesive go? How do I lose things? I haven't gone anywhere. There it, is. there it is. Don't worry, I found it. So how this works is you peel off this side and you leave the um, center in because you can save the center for later. But you peel it off like that. Pop out this. Come on. Probably could pop that out before doing anything else. in there, like that, almost like that, mine's a little bit bent, so it didn't quite line up the way I wanted it to, there we go. Pop out the middle there. Save this for whatever. It's always good to have squares of double shaded tape. And from here you have one of two decisions. You have a decision to make with one of two options. Um, of course you could have just not used this at all and left it as is and it would probably be fine. Or you can leave this uh, paper on so that it doesn't stick down so that it's not a permanent install. That is a perfectly valid option. I'm just going to full send it. I'm going to peel off this tape or paper and see what happens. And before sticking that down, we want to stick our bracket back in there. And we will actually, before doing that, I'm going to stick on the new lens here. So I don't get my fingerprints all over the screen. Now it does come with a lens, but you can use whatever lens you want if you have like a limited edition style build that you want to do, like a Famitsu or, or, or something. Or maybe you're using a Game Boy Pocket that does not have a power LED. And that's fine too. A little bit of canned air. Just to try and reduce the dust, peel that off. And here goes nothing. Now it doesn't matter too greatly if this is centered, but we want what we want is that it is straight, so it needs to be lined up with either this bracket or this side, uh, because there's nothing to line up on the bottom except this D-pad that it's going to hit, or power switch on the top that it's going to hit. 
But that's what this bracket is for. You line it up there and I guess hope for the best. Uh, but I suppose I can clean that later. Okay, let's carry on, shall we? Attach this insulating film to the metal surface at the back of the LCD. Um, I have some news for some of you guys, but this isn't actually metal, the back of the screen. It is plastic. And such, I really don't think it's conductive. But screw it. Why not? Alright, let's get the brightness controls. Let's take care of that before I get this whole thing assembled. So, they, the instructions tell you to use a certain set of vias, like down here. I don't like how that's going to look since this is a transparent shell, so I'm going to try and do something a little bit differently. I know that these buttons connect elsewhere, and the buttons it wants us to use are select A and B. So select is on the left here. One of these should be a ground. It is that one, maybe? Oh, Christ, I forgot about this. This uses a uh, diode matrix. Uh, so the buttons, I think they're all over on the right here. That's it. Okay, so for select, we can use this via where my red probe is. I'll go ahead and lift that up, and you can see, I'm going to go ahead and point to it. Of this group of six, it is on the left, second down. Let's go ahead and get that tinned. And this is the wrong soldering iron tip for this. Not that it's too big, it's just hard to get the flat side down. Uh, where'd the wire go? Here it is. So I'm going to do what I did on the Game Boy Color install. I'm just going to go ahead and tin this up. Both of them. And then I'm going to take my flush cutters. Trim that to size. Both of them. And then, once we jam this in the hole, we should be able to use it to get the uh, contact required to get the solder to wet to the via. And we can add more solder to make sure it's a solid joint. And boom, all done. Next, we want to get A and B. Double checking something real quick. All right. So B is going to be of those that group of six vias. It's the bottom right. And I'll try and post a wiring diagram if I remember. help flux. I should be using flux. And then last but not least, let's desolder this. And trim it down. And before I solder it, I need to figure out what I'm soldering it to. Should be. Oh, bottom left. Noise. Nice. 
So select A or select B and A. tinned here. And I lost the short wire. No, I didn't. It's right here. I'm just going to solder the short wire while I'm here. I hate how long they have these. I mean, it's such an easy thing to fix, but at the same time, why do I have to fix it? Why can't they fix it? Why can't they just do it right from the get-go? Alright. So this top one is select. It's too long. Turn that down. This one is B. Turn that down. Unlike other versions of this kit, there are obviously soldering required, but you get much better control over the features of the kit. All right. Well, it's that, mate. We can go and continue with the install here. So, I'm going to go ahead and reuse the original buttons because that usually results in a much better experience. slammed in there. And just to prevent this from keeping wiggling around on me, I'm going to take a little bit of double-sided tape and you can use some of the leftover from the stuff you just used earlier for the screen lens but I'm just going to use a little bit of tape that I have because it'll just take me less time to snip that off. Let's jam that right in the middle there. to stick that to that so that this stops moving around on me. And now I can take these sensors and do something with them. I don't know what, but I can do something with them. So this one will go... I think the idea is to fold it up Jam it right there. And unplug that, get it out of the way. And this one, I guess I'm going to shove in there. Because it's kind of the hand we were dealt with this one. Oops. Oh god, the hell. Oh, 
All right, so I don't know what happened to this sensor. And um, you certainly shouldn't have to fix that, but because I literally have copper tape and can make a new one, I'm gonna just make a new one. All these sensors are just copper tape soldered to a wire. That's it. That is not a good solder joint at all, but we'll just go with it. Because now I have an adhesive side. Stick that down. Nice and flush, tuck the wire in, and get this connector back in there. And oop, I'm forgetting something. What am I forgetting? I'm forgetting this insulation that I really don't think is necessary, but I'm not going to not include it, just in case. It's also not going to stick very well because A, it's not very sticky, and B, there's nothing for it to stick to. nice and seated and let's screw it down because this is a new shell we are threading these holes for the first time these screws will take a little bit more effort to go in but that is expected center. I do not like that whatsoever. But that is also probably because I stuck the board down with some adhesive. And the only way to fix that is to... There we go. Just to manhandle the board a little bit. All right, let's do the last solder joint and then we're good to go to test it out. Just gonna tin that wire again, or tin that pad. Now I'm tinning the wire, trim that a little bit. And realistically, I would like this to be on the other side of the ribbon, so I'm gonna feed this through. I notice my camera has not cut off on me at this point. I find that very interesting. I do not know why. Actually, I do know why. Because variable frame rate means that the video can be longer than initially anticipated. All right. That's right there. I really need tweezers for this. Uh, there they are. 
Yeah. Boom. Drop that off. Drop that in. And let's finish the assembly. It is, uh... Oh, don't tell me. Ugh. I was worried about this. Freaking aftermarket shells, man. This doesn't actually fit in there. The one that comes with it fit. If that fits, then yeah, fuck it. We'll just use this one. I prefer the original one, but I'd also rather not like to sit here for 20 minutes filing this. There we go. Again, threading it for the first time, so they'll take a little bit more to go in. I'm not going to fully seat them all yet, just yet. I didn't even check that. I'm glad it comes with the uh, screw, uh, the spring posts already installed. very close to all the way in, but that one is too, yep. Alright, so I was going to knock points off for not being able to fit this power switch, like it seems most aftermarket shells have that problem with, but it gets points back for coming with a power switch that it works with and doesn't feel like total garbage. So, let's try it out. I'm going to try it with, I'll be right back. I'm going to try it with my weapon of choice here, some fully charged Ikea Lada cells. Um, these are best bang for buck on, ooh, that's nice. Uh, What was I looking for? V position, H position. I don't remember how to... Okay, let me look at it. Let me look it up. I will pause while I'm looking this up. I don't think my stuff is wired properly. Or maybe it is, and the uh, documentation is just terrible. Okay, how do I get out of that? I like the DMG, it just comes with a little rotary encoder that you can fuck with. No, that's not it. 
See, that's not supposed to come right up. I don't think this is wired properly. I don't have, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I'm going to play with it. I'll be right back. All right. Sorry. I thought I was being clever and I thought I was, you know, making this better for myself here. But instead of using these solder points, you have to use these solder points before the diode arrays because um, Game Boy Pockets don't use a common ground button system. They use a button matrix and on the back here, we take a look at these two parts right here, these DA2 and DA1. These are the button matrix diodes for the inputs on the Game Boy Pocket. So we have to use the, uh, the, the pins, or the vias, excuse me, in the instructions there. So, <sighs> RTFM, but that's okay. I'll go ahead and fold those nice and flat. So we can stick that back down in there. That's why I was getting some erratic behavior. At least it's an easy enough fix. Besides, this shell isn't that transparent. It's not going to be that obvious. Jam that back home. And let's get this soldered back down. Tin it one more time. Assembly. This time I'll put an effort into putting the pretty screws on the outside. That's not a pretty screw. Ooh, but that was nice. All right, I'll put that there. And then the gross screw goes in there. Realistically, I should swap this screw that I'm screwing in with this one right here. But, eh, it's really not that big of a deal. Besides, I'll, I'm pr let's be honest, I'm probably going into this thing at least one more time. All right, all right, all right. Let's try it out. Just winding up my solder here. Now, if we hold, well, let's try it. If we hold A and B, we should get no menu. And indeed, we're getting no menu. But if I hold select in A and B, I should get a menu. I uh, said, if I hold select in A and B, uh-oh.
shouldn't have to hold it this long. It was working better before I did something. Let's at least see if it's working. Oh my god, did I have it wired up to start? No. Well, A and B are both working fine. I can't test select because I don't have that unlocked in this game. Or, I do have it unlocked, I don't have it set. Select is definitely working, though. Oh! Hello. It is wired up to start. Interesting. Okay. No? That's... Ugh. I don't know why it wasn't working. Now it's working fine. Go figure. So there we go. Up and down is A and B. If you hold select and hit A, it'll enter and confirm menus. If you hold select and hit B, it'll exit the menu without saving. And let's get that. I know on your screen it's going to look not quite off, but I'm trying to get it centered from my perspective. And we can enable the pixel grid for those that like it. Personally, I think it should be off, but there's your options. battery display on but you can't actually see the battery display with the pixel grid so let's turn the pixel grid oh I'm sorry it takes some you getting used to getting to these good lord I can't even speak it takes some getting used to this input method but then we can change the Color values. You know, to set some custom palettes or something. You know how it is. So on and so forth. And reset if you get yourself into a pickle. But unfortunately, what reset does is it also um, will reset the position of your screen there. And if you're using a funny playing spaced bracket, it looks like that's what you want your screen position to be 50, 37. But anyway, Let's, uh, let's stop messing with that. You can go through all the settings on your own if you want. Um, in game here, I don't see any frame dropping or screen tearing. So let's try out. Da -da -da -da. The Easy Flash. And again, we're on rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries. and it's boot looping. We're not even maxed out as far as brightness goes. But if we put on minimum brightness, is that gonna work? Nope. All right. 
that's kind of what I figured. So before moving on to testing with the EverDrive, I am going to try a different set of batteries. Now these are a set of Jugi AAA batteries. Um, for those that aren't aware of what Jugi, but come on, there you go. You, you can focus. There you go. For those that aren't aware what these are, um, these are basically lithium ion batteries inside of this casing with a circuit wired into it to output a steady 1.5 volts. So if I jab a multimeter onto this son of a gun, you see it's putting out exactly 1.5 volts, whereas if you take this thing, you can see it's putting out a little bit less, 1.36 even though it is freshly charged. So I'm hoping this extra voltage will get me over that threshold and let us boot. And indeed it does. Cool. So I definitely cannot recommend these batteries as they are, but these are pre-production units. My specific problem with them is that the capacity is absolute garbage. Um, if you get three and a half hours battery life out of these, you'll get like half an hour out of these. So, got to do my tests quick here. But let's go ahead and do the scrolling bars test. So, same spiel as usual. When the S in scrolling goes across the left hand side of the screen, it does issue an LCD reset command, which most backlight kits these days are handling absolutely flawlessly, but original screens will drop a frame or two, and the early backlight kits <laughs> it didn't handle it very well at all. Uh, so what I'm seeing with this test, what I'm looking for is a nice smooth movement of the pattern across the screen with no visible tearing or frame dropping and that is exactly what I'm seeing and it looks absolutely fantastic. So I'm happy with that. Let's do one more test here. I'm going to reset it and hopefully get this done before my phone dies here. Let's do Zelda here. This is Link's Awakening DX. Of course, it's in black and white because it's a Game Boy Pocket. And I'm just going to scroll real quick back and forth across the screen. And what we're looking for are any artifacts from the Pixel Overdrive um, that we see on the other kits that use uh, these LCDs here, the BlackBerry 9380 LCDs. Um, we usually see that resulting in a lot of ghosting of this image across the screen here. I'm seeing none of that. Uh, another thing we're looking at is this dude's chain. Yes, it does flicker. Yes, that is intentional. Uh, unfortunately, with the original Game Boy, there was no real easy way to do transparency effects. So what they did was they just turned the sprite on and off as quick as they could. And with the terrible pixel response times of the original screen, that resulted in a nice transparency effect. The pixel response times of this screen are much better, so you see that it's turning on and off. But one thing that we're looking for in particular is if his chain, while it's flickering, if it, when the screen is scrolling, if it actually stays where it's supposed to be, which is that it scrolls across the screen, or if it's you know flickering in place even while the screen is transitioning until we're all the way over to the other side and I don't see any issues. So that looks absolutely fantastic to me. And then of course you have your color palettes. It doesn't come with too many presets, but one of the nice things is if you, this kit does save the settings when you power it off and power it back on. So if you select one of the presets that you absolutely hate, um, like this one. It, it can be any of the presets, it literally does not matter. You go into the menu and you uh, adjust the colors. How do we adjust the co color adjust? And you set your own preset. It'll save and it'll overwrite this preset. 
and you can do this for any of the presets that you want and you can set all four colors the white the light gray the dark gray and then the black and you can set them to whatever code you want you have 31 options for red 63 options for green sorry 32 options 64 and then 32 again um, and you can do that for each all four of the colors and you know once you get out of the menu you press A to save it select an A excuse me and Bob Jaunty it'll overwrite that original palette and you're good to go so I'm actually really happy with this kit um, unfortunately it does not solve that horrendous battery life issue it seems with the Easy Flash Omega uh, but what I'm expecting to see when I test it with my EverDrive here is that even on full brightness, it should still boot. And indeed it does. Oh, we're not on full brightness. But now we are. Let's power cycle it. One more time, just to be sure. for it to start loading before we call it a success. Yeah, there you go. Cool, so that works. Let's just run one more quick test here on the LADAs and see if it boots the EverDrive with no issues. Ah, oh, shoot. Excellently hit the brightness sensor. camera around sorry I was trying to check the battery life on my phone so that boots Let's start a game maybe and there it goes so yeah, I dare say it'll be fine with OEM carts or with an EverDrive, but if you're using an Easy Flash Junior, you're going to need either these types of batteries when they come out or to do a lithium battery mod or something. Or you'll just have to pony up for an EverDrive or just play on OEM carts, and that's, that's, that's just the way it is. Um, so in conclusion, this is actually a really nice kit. I am super happy with it. I will go ahead and throw some links in the description to where you can get one of these kits. Um, so I just want to go ahead and thank Retro Game Repair Shop again for sending me one of these things. It's actually super cool. And I don't know if I already went over this because, to be honest, that was like an hour ago. My phone died and I had to throw it on the charger. Um, but... I will go ahead and throw in the description, like I said, links to this kit where you can get it. I will also go ahead and throw a link to this shell, which, yes, yes, it's Retro 6, but it's not terrible. Since he didn't claim that it's perfect, you know, I, I can hold it to a much more reasonable standard. And yeah, it definitely has its problems, like these, um, these divots near the cart slot. I don't know what the hell is up with that. There's also, you can see all the support lines underneath um, like where there's all these ribs in the plastic you can see them on the surface texture like if I were to paint this you'd still be able to see all these lines even though this thing is um, transparent you can see them anyway but y y you know what I'm getting at it's still a pretty decent shell and as far as I can tell it is the only place where you can get this uh, smoke color uh, unfortunately it doesn't come with any of these labels and mine did come with a defect on the back there but I had labels and whatever so be it I don't I don't really the, the defects not gonna bug me that much 
But um, yeah, anyway, check the description. There's going to be some good links to this product. And one more thing that I've been trying to throw in my descriptions lately is a link to my wiki page where I have listed every single backlight kit that I'm aware of for every single Game Boy, and I have it sorted out by each console. So I have a section for DMG, I have a section for Game Boy Pocket, I have a section for Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance SP. I was going to say and so on, but I think that's it. Um, and each section has a summary of, like, if I were to build a new Game Boy, this is the kit that I would pick. Um, and then I go into more detail of each kit, you know, just, just a few sentences, like two to five sentences of major pros and major cons of each kit. Like this kit drops frames or this kit is drop in with no modern required, or this kit requires soldering stuff, stuff like that. Um, I think it's super, I, I hope it's super helpful. I've heard good, good things about it. Um, of course I'm biased because I, I made the guide, but Long story short, the reason I mention that is because I wanted to say that this kit has uh, basically become my favorite Game Boy Pocket kit, and going forward I would recommend it for new builds. That being said, there is another kit out there. This is the, uh, I did a video on this one very recently. This is that Cloud Game Store, uh, not quite drop-in but almost drop-in kit. It, uh, it's much easier to install. Much easier to install. I didn't even finish the install, but there we are. Um, it doesn't get nearly as bright, as you can tell. The uh, quality of the LCD itself is lower as well. Um, the pixel scaling isn't as high, but it's significantly easier to install and it does get better battery life. So that's also a good alternative if for some reason you don't want to carve up your shelf or one of these things. It's also a good, it's a good kit. I, I dig it. Um, but anyway, I go into more detail on my uh, wiki page, but I, as you can see, you know, which one's brighter. Uh, it does have another sensor. I thought I had another sensor. I don't remember. I thought I had color palettes, but I don't see the sensor through the shell. So I guess not. Oh wait, no, you press and hold. Just kidding. And yeah, the color palettes aren't as... I don't know. They're... they're they're a different set of color palettes and this is all you can do you can't program it and it doesn't come with any more than that whereas this one you have the uh, you know different shades imitating the uh, backlights for the OEMs screens but anyway sorry I'm rambling I need to get out of here um, I lost my train of thought anyway so check the description there's links in there super cool kit if you have any questions Hit me up in the comments, I'll be sure to... <sighs> I can't even guarantee that I'll answer you, but I do try and read every comment, and um, if I can answer, and if I have the time to do so, I will. But quite frankly, at this point, I do get a lot of comments, and this is just a hobby for me. I don't want to spend all my time doing it, so I can't reply to every comment. That's just unfortunately how it is. But if you have any questions, I will be sure to answer those. Um, and otherwise, have a fantastic night. Thanks for watching.